You can't stop me. I am carrying something. You cannot stop me because I am carrying. I want you to tell two people. You don't need to touch them. Just tell them, I honor you. I love you. I thank God for you. But you can't stop me because I am carrying something. This year is not just a leap year. It is a leap year, L-I-P. A year that you must learn to open your mouth. So when we tell you in church to say something, you better say it. You can't stop me because I am carrying something. And what I'm carrying is double portion. Let's take off from the book of Genesis. Chapter number 50. I know you all are gorgeously dressed, but this evening we are going to pray. And by the time this service is over, the devil will be crying. Because you are moving to another level. Genesis chapter 50, beginning from verse 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from thence. So Joseph died, being an hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him. And he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Genesis chapter 49, beginning from verse 22. Jacob was going home and he was blessing his children. Verse 22 of Genesis 49. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above. Somebody say amen. amen. He shall bless you with the blessings of the deep that lieth under. That talks about wealth. I can't hear your amen very well. The blessings of the breast and the blessings of the womb. The blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. That's double. Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting arm, they shall be on the head of Joseph and everyone listening to me tonight. And on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. I sense in my spirit that everyone in this conference is about to change level. You are about to move to your next level. Can I remind you that amen is not an encouragement to the preacher? Amen is the acceptance of a divine verdict. In your marriage, you will experience your next level. In business, in ministry, over your children, over your health, over your finances. If your amen can be louder than your neighbor's own, you will move to your next level. For every delivery, there is a labor room where you travel. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 6 verse 8 tells us that. Who hath had such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall they all be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travel. This evening you are here to travel in prayer. For your double portion. Because the double portion is not a joke. It's not just for nothing. It is for something. By the time I'm done with this sharing, you will understand the journey that God is taking us 
When it was time for Israel to leave Egypt, when it was time for Israel to get the double portion, when it was time for Israel to fulfill prophecy, when it was time for Israel to move to the next level, Joseph sensed it. I don't want to belabor you because from kindergarten you all know the story of Joseph and his brothers. Joseph sensed it and he said to the children of Israel, I know that God will visit you. I know that one day you will leave this land of slavery. But I beg of you, do not leave my bone in Egypt. Carry my bone along to the promised land. And it was sealed. When it was time to go, Pharaoh said, no way, you aren't going to the promised land. The Red Sea said, no way, you aren't going to the <laughs> promised land. Jordan said, no way, because that is what usually happens when you are about to give expression to your next level. But I hear Israel saying, Pharaoh, you can't stop me because I am carrying Joseph's bones. I am a woman on errand. I am going to the promised land. And in my bag, inside my luggage, there is a prophetic boom. Pharaoh, you cannot stop me because I'm carrying something. Take my bag and you will find Joseph's bones there. That is the reason I know that I will get to the promised land because in my bag there is something. is why it doesn't matter the persecution. That is why the Red Sea, I laugh at you. That is why oh, 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 is that all you can do, Satan? How market? Check my bag. I'm carrying something. This bag has destiny inside it. Because in Matthew 27 verse 50. Saints are going to resurrect. So Joseph said, carry my bones along. Go bury it in Egypt. Go bury it in the promised land. Because one day, Jesus will resurrect and saints will resurrect with him. Some of you don't know what to carry. That is why you are afraid. Hey, coronavirus. Hey, somebody's talking about me. Hey. I woke up recently. And I went to the mirror and I said, Satan, how market? Shabby, you carried my matter on your head two years ago. See your life. Because you don't know that you cannot stop me. Because you may not look like it, but you're carrying something. The size of what you carry determines the size of your battle. Robbers don't attack empty vaults. So if you are going through anything, it is because of what you are carrying. And it is beyond you. 
It is Joseph's bones and it is in your bag. Once you make up your mind to begin to give expression to the double portion, get ready for a fight. The size of your destiny determines the size of your